What's up and welcome to Fourth Dimensional Gaming. I'm Omnipotent Dog. And I'm the Cranky Nerd. Today it's another episode of Bang for the Buck. So in case you don't know the drill of the show, uh, this is our fourth episode. Um, but basically the, the idea is we're going to take a look at two games uh, and then we're going to compare and contrast them. And then at the end of the episode, we will ultimately decide which one is the best bang for the buck. Not which one is the best game, but which one is the best for its price. So the first game we looked at was Grid. Uh, yeah. Josh, why don't you explain uh, what, what Grid is? Grid is a car racing game that was released on the 4th of June 2008. Um, it's just one of those generic kind of uh, racing games that you, you can't really dif differ it from other racing games that were released during <laughs> that period of time. The multiplayer in this, if you can show the recording now, um, <laughs> you, you'll see that when you're actually trying to go any faster than maybe 50, it over revs and spins you out unless so, you like tap the acceleration key you can increase in speed by tapping the acceleration and i want to make this clear that it feels like an xbox port in the way that it seems like there's meant to be a sensitivity there you can't really do that and with josh keys. and i didn't understand what the hell was going on at first but then we figured out that what it must be is when you're playing this game on the xbox it, it senses your sensitivity because the triggers, one of the trigger buttons must have been the accelerate button, right? And, but on a keyboard, there's no such thing as sensitivity with, with a key. You're either pressing it or you're not. So the, the port just doesn't work. And the first thing that we noticed, um, you know, the first yeah. clue that we got that this was not going to be, you know, a port of a very high caliber was when we entered the game. And the... The, the, you have an, uh, your mouse, right? Yeah. But your mouse does nothing. You can move your mouse around any of the, of the GUI, but the GUI doesn't light up or the G, that part of the GUI isn't selected because yeah, you, you, you have, have to, to use the arrow keys through. to navigate. Your right hand on the arrow keys and then your left hand crossed over and it's just awful. And you just think to yourself, were they even thinking when they did the key bindings or was this just one of those kind of ports that they just wanted to, you know, rush out and, and, you know, get to the Steam store as soon as possible. You you accelerate, it over revs, and then you spin out. And when you spin if out... If you press that accelerate button and it isn't full stop, you're going to spin out again. Because it thinks that you're trying to fully accelerate, it doesn't have the, the sensitivity, which is, a, which is a huge problem. I get my brain <laughs> spun out. <laughs> I'm spinning out so much. Oh, fucking hell. You kill us. What the hell? What the hell? Fuck this fucking game. <laughs> and every fucking thing. Ah, ah. I'm, just, I'm just going very slowly and only revving a little bit. And then the downside of this is that when, um, because you're so limited, to to the speed that you that you drive at it's just yeah. so slow so fast oh my god this game <laughs> this game is off the wall look how fast i'm driving <laughs> there was one map that actually worked but um there was a bit at the end of the map where you could actually properly accelerate and like get up to speed but that's like the finishing line what happened there oh no, oh, you noticed there for a second, it was allowing me to race properly. Yeah, because the map was coming to an end. <laughs> That's why. The maps were incredibly boring. There was a map in Tokyo. There was a map in Detroit. There was a map in San Francisco. They all looked the fucking same. Nothing. Yep, they do. You could be in Tokyo and you may as well have been in San Francisco or Detroit. It, it doesn't look any different. It's just road and uh, and the, like the people 
The people in the game, the NPCs didn't even look interested. Even they look bored. This is one thing that was a bit weird. With the destruction, right? Hmm. How uh, you would just smash into the wall and die instantly. Josh was actually trying to destroy his car. He was actually deliberately smashing into walls just to see how long it would take him for his car to become destroyed. It took forever. I bumped into one wall. I figured it out, Josh. What? See the speedometer? Yeah. You can't go into the red, that's when you saw. Yeah, I know. That's what it is. Oh my god! <laughs> you yeah, you slide me in the wall! How did that happen? <laughs> Total damage, 88%. <laughs> Grid? I think was originally meant as a um, arcade game that you would have, like you have the screen and you'd have your seat and your steering wheel. That I think was originally made for oh. that. Wait a minute, so maybe this wasn't was even point. a port of an Xbox game. Maybe this was a, a, a port of an arcade game. Yeah. And we haven't even considered that. But that might be what See, it was. Probably, that's probably why it was all weird, because they... Uh, they they usually would just have the select cast thing and all that. But, um, they do have menus in them, but they're set up differently, and that's probably why you couldn't use your mouse. We couldn't go online. I don't know whether the servers were down, or, I mean, Yami uh, said that perhaps they just, they just shut off the servers. Like I said, maybe it's because of Grid 2, and, you know, maybe they've dedicated all their servers to Grid 2. But if that's the case, bloody say that! Have a little pop-up message that says... Sorry, we've dedicated all our servers to Grid 2. Why don't you, you know, but try buying It'll that? Would be game. advertising as well. Yeah, exactly. It's good promotion for the other game. If you want to buy this game for the multiplayer, I'm gonna say don't do it. But if you're into racing games, <laughs> if you're into racing games and you want to play single player, then you, this game's all right. So, um, okay, it's basically you choose a race. Tells you what you earn for it and what's the goal, whether you have to be third or within a, a certain place limit, and then you go do that race, you earn the money, and you can like buy cars and all that sort of stuff. It's just standard race stuff, but it's it it is pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it personally. It's just like you can go in, do a race, you know, walk away. There's no story really. You just have to like rank up to the next stage. So it's it does definitely feel like an art arcade. Our campaign. Another thing, the the choice that you had of cars was pretty limited. And most of it was the same cars. Most of the time, it was the same two cars. There was like the drift one, which offered different ones. Yes, there were there were different cars for the drift maps. But then again, all of these, all of the circuits felt like drift maps because of how much you kept on spinning out. Oh god, you're spinning out! Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this? <laughs> Look, I'm not even pressing any, like, left or right keys, and it just spins out, like it's over-revving. I think the best thing about this game, really, was the graphics. Like, the graphics were actually quite impressive. Impressive for the time. <laughs> the worst thing about this game was, it, it. you said it when we were playing it, it didn't feel like a car racing game. You said, it, oh, yeah. this feels like a car simulator. Straight. Keep it straight. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> Fuck! All you need to do to go out of control is accelerate. No turning. No, just accelerate and your car goes out of control. And the thing that sucks is because you're going so slow, you can't gain any speed. So if one person keeps on spinning out, it's impossible for them to catch back up in, in the next oh, couple, yeah. of, couple of races. If you keep spinning out, you're fucked, and there's no way you can gain that, you know, that that stretch again. I'm in. The, I'm not controlling the car right now. <laughs> I'm just in the menu screen, and it's doing it for me. <laughs> this is how the map is apparently meant to be driven at a very slow speed. <laughs> just yeah. So it's it's very very punishing to um to people who who are not, you know, great at car racing games. And there should have been some sort of handicap, you know, for people who are better at it. I think, in summary, this game is not a game for people who want to just play a fun, fast-paced car racing game. Oh, yeah, it does not feel fast-paced at all. No, it, it's 
it's the polar opposite of of that kind of racing game and that's what you want in a racing game even if your car didn't spin out from all the time for going too fast the game still wouldn't work because the maps are so small and enclosed and there are too many turns so you wouldn't be able to pick up any speed anywhere have you played a racing game um thomas right what would you want in a racing game? Even if you, 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 I know you're not into racing games. One key factor in a racing game. What would you say that is? I got a need. The need for speed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to go fast. We have. We get on this right now, and and make it so that when you pick up any amount of speed, the car just just spins out. This is going to sell a million units, no doubt. Twist you add heaps of turns in it to make it go slow. It's a racing game Grandpa can play because <laughs> Grandpa's always telling you, like, slow down, we're in such a hurry for her. <laughs> I think Grandpa <laughs> would like to press the forward button, not even try to turn and just crash into the wall and then die. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa would be like, what is this? I hate this game. Doesn't make any sense. Josh. What what would you what rating are you gonna give this game? One out of ten. One out of wow. Okay, I would give it one and a half out of ten. I I withdraw. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it at a two because we didn't play the mul uh, the single player. Okay, if we're rating it on its single player as well, I'd probably put it up to two as well. It's <laughs> fucking gay. It's just fucking. <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck everything. I made it. I'm making it. What? I'm exiting this game right now. Yeah, me, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> and I'm never going to play it again. <laughs> Are you sure you want to exit this game? Yes. Yes, I am, <laughs> I am so sure right now. <laughs> so sure. So, TJ, why don't you explain to us basically what uh, Zombie Tycoon in 2 is? Zombie Tycoon is an, R is an RTS style game. But it uses a ver and it's themed around the idea of a zombie invasion. But it's not so much about what you would expect from something like this, like um, a zombie invasion versus like the human survivors. Um, you play as a character called uh, Orville Tycoon or something like that, and um, <clears throat> he wears his gas mask and he he's like the scientist, stereotypical supervillain dude. And uh, he raises, through science and bullshit, he raises his army of mutated undead to oh, take over. Oh, he stole the research from Brain Off. And so, and so it's essentially zombie on zombie action in this RTS between the standard shambling zombie and, and, and a bunch of like blue feral zombies. Chuckle fuck! Join these other chuckle fucks and attack that! No. 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 You! Attack this thing! I command it! There's certain buildings uh, of, that you can go into that which you capture and that's what changes what your zombie is into a like, samurai or whatever mechanic and that, that's yeah, what it is. Camp. And the, these, the, the more places you capture, you do get more zombies but you control them in a sort of um, indirect way. You say, all zombies go here. You know, actually select yes. them there's a two groups that you do select but the rest of the zombies you can just you indirectly tell them where to go we also have cleaners which can go into hazardous areas we have the engineer which can fl which can operate machinery that can gain new access to new parts of the map or other machines that might be in a story mission there's scouts which i guess are stealth creatures but yeah the uh, the samurais are very strong the only way that Josh was able to actually win against me was with the samurai units because I was <laughs> I was winning against Josh until uh with, in, with the, uh, the the blue guys until he brought out his samurais and just completely decimated me. It, it confused me at first because when you capture a building, a zombie is assigned to that building. I, I have to say I would have preferred it if the zombies, like like I said before, I would have preferred it if instead of going to a certain building and then upgrading your, your units, they would just spawn. Because to me at first, it seemed like there wasn't much variety in the units. Whereas it turned out it was just that I didn't know how to get the other units. This is what's weird. Uh, the first game was actually on the PlayStation. Second game was released on the PlayStation as well as the Xbox. And then this... 
and then later released on the PC. I gotta say, that's pretty good graphics for a PlayStation 1. No, 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 PlayStation Portable. That's why we haven't heard of it. Flower people, attack! <laughs> I've literally got flower people! Attack flower people! Okay. literally got flower Run! People. Run, flower people! Run! Run, uh, Skidmark! <laughs> Run, Skidmark! Run like the wind, Skidmark! Yeehaw, cowboys! <laughs> we got a skid mark here! We gotta take him down! Like, aesthetically, I really like the, the aesthetic of the game. I mean, it's nothing I've not. I mean, it's nothing I've not seen before. No, definitely. It's still, it's still good. It's still like good looking. Like, I'm even like looking like just at the main menu, and like even like the moon design is aesthetically pleasing. It's simple. But it, but it looks, it looks good. It doesn't look half-assed. The zombies look phenomenal. But okay, the, um, but the human civilians, the human civilians look like muppets. It's funny to look at, but at the same time, it also achieves a nice effect for the desired aim of of the game. You're playing as an evil genius with a zombie horde, or more generally, you're playing as a zombie horde. This cements a nice. Um, superior image of yourself above the human civilians. It create it, it gives a nice image for the human civilians as a target. This is like this is probably how a zombie horde would view them. There was, there's one thing that I that I didn't like about targeting the humans. You didn't actually gain anything from killing them. It seems like the human civilians should at least drop something. Nothing major. Yeah, like, yeah. if nothing else, they should, like, they should be used for grinding something. Like, there was would... no variety in maps. And the weird thing was the map looks really big at first, but once you actually start playing, it's it's deceptively... You realise that it's deceptively big. But the, the, the focus of the game seems to be on the two, um, you know, different races versing each other. But it takes so long in the multiplayer f just for the races to get to the point yeah. where they're right next to each other. So I would have liked it if they'd sort of streamlined that process a bit more. Because it makes it yeah. just a bit grindy and it gets a bit boring. No! Shoo! <laughs> no way, Steve! No! Just... My zombies! Yeah! What the fuck? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, you bastard! Fuck you! What I would have liked was tools and weapons like even if it's just like incidental stuff like not even stuff that you yourself activate but things that are present me and uh, uh omnipotent dog played through two multiplayer shots and both times i just got raped but see i wonder if maybe that's why they implemented the npcs just as like an annoyance the only problem with that is it's not implemented well enough you can make them follow you to the NPCs. You know the the ones with no like hardly any brains. We just tell them to go to the location. They will follow you, right? And then you can just drag them all the way to that NPC. Now, what happens with the robot is when you kill him, he self destructs and kills every single zombie around him. Every single. Jesus. So that big massive pile of zombies that you just built up to attack is gone. It was. Okay. I liked how simple it was that really worked for me it's really yeah. intuitive and it's easy to learn and and it's a lot of fun but mm -hmm. yeah. the one problem i had was was the you know the whole you have to go into the houses to level up your troops i didn't understand that and i feel that was kind of why i kept on losing if they'd made it just easier then that would really would have sold it for me yeah go away go away oh How did you get so many fucking dudes? <laughs> Human, I killed two humans. Buildings cat. Jesus! How did you get 23? There's a lot of RTSs out there, but the thing is, sometimes they get very complicated, and th and some people just like have a harder time handling and processing very complicated strategic games like that. So this is more towards like pe it's people who don't who want a more casual. RTS experience without it being an outright casual game. I wish there had been more map choices for the multiplayer. Oh yeah, like, definitely. Even... I really wish there was more map choices. 
to... Even in things like Smite, like, single game modes will have, like, the same map every time, but at least they have a different map for different game modes. No! <laughs> so I think Steve is right going now. to win for the- Oh, no! 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 <laughs> yes! <laughs> At the last moment, I killed him! What the fuck? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's bullshit. You, you oh, I would went, so love to see that right now. Oh, you went, you went near my tower defense. I'm gonna say nine out of ten. Um, good, good for what it's worth. Uh, especially good for the demographic they're probably aiming for. Like I said, casual but not too casual. But even in the sense that it's a bit more. A more of a casual RTS, I still feel there could have been slightly more, but not enough to make me dislike the game. A nine? Well, wow, you're generous. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. Oh, I was gonna oh, say, yeah. uh, seven out of ten. Okay, okay, I'll say eight out of ten, I guess, because I was gonna go with eight, but I was like, uh. Um, so, Zombie Tycoon was ten dollars. Um, Grid is fifteen dollars. Which one is better bang for your buck? Zombie Tycoon. Zombie Tycoon. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. So, this has been Bang for the Buck. I've been Cranky Nerd. I've been TJ45. And you guys have been great mates. Boy! <laughs>